of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of these disciples were eating with the fire of Jesus, that is, without washing. For the Pharisees and all Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus preserving the tradition of the elders. And you do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe. The washing of cups, pots, and bread and So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders? But eat with the fire of the cups. He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about the hypocrites as it is written. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts to stop me. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in, can defile, but the things that come from us are what's defiled. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come in. Or in case of theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from the sin. Please be seated. Well, grace, peace, and night of the future be with all of you in the name of the one who questioned it. Well, as is so often in our gospel readings, today we find Jesus arguing with the Pharisees. They are arguing with him today about whether or not people should wash their hands before they eat. And on the surface, I gotta say, I think the Pharisees are right. The Jews should wash their hands before they eat. But the actual act of washing one's hands, that's not really what they were arguing about. Because often when we are arguing or when we get upset, we use something trivial as pretext. And the real reason that we're angry or arguing is something completely different. Something that is bubbling just to be surface. For example, recently I got a little bit upset with my son. I went into the freezer, I got out my ice cream, I scooped a giant big awesome dish of Blue Moon into a bowl, I went over to our silverware drawer, I opened it up, no screen. So I went downstairs and I yelled at him about having all the food for dinner. Now, was I arguing about spoons? Not really. I was frustrated that he has a messy room. I was frustrated that he doesn't bring his dirty dishes back to the kitchen. And because of that, we're always looking for things like silverware. But realistically, beneath even that layer of the real stuff, there was a third layer of what was really bugging me, and that was I was not eating my ice cream if I really wanted to. Today's story finds Jesus, we think, in God. A group of Pharisees have arrived up from Jerusalem and they see that some of the disciples have not ritually cleaned their hands before they start to eat. So confronting Jesus, they ask him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat five of them? What we have here, coming from the Pharisees, is the time of honored argument of what we've always done that way. Does that sound familiar? I mean, we've all heard somebody use that excuse. And like it or not, sometimes, oftentimes, we use it ourselves. When somebody asks why we want to change a tradition or we want to try something new, a lot of the pushback comes from the perspective of it. But we've always done it this way. Look around you here. Trinity Lutheran Church has been here 
for 171 years. We have a lot of traditions. I mean, we're Lutheran for God's sake. Tradition is something that we identify with. I wouldn't be a Lutheran if I didn't have a lot of traditions. But sometimes we can get a little stuck in those traditions. And the traditions themselves can actually hold us back. Now, us modern Christians really like to scold the Pharisees as being too hung up on their traditions. But when we look into a mirror, we have to admit that sometimes we may be out just a little like that. What's interesting to me about this whole discussion with the Pharisees is that traditions are not the law. There is no law in the Bible that mandates that the Israelites watch the flock. The closest thing that we have in Exodus is a law that tells the Israelites that they need to ritually cleanse themselves before they enter into the worship space, before they enter the temple. Now, the Pharisees were a group of Jews that grew out of parts of the Jewish world that had dealt with the Babylonian exile, where they were forced out and had to live away from the temple. These exiled Jews then began to work in their home because that was the only place they could. And very similar to us nowadays, in places all across the world, not even across Christianity, worship tends to get one way before a meal. And washing before eating became deflated with washing before worship. And that, my friends, is how this is the point. So after hearing the Pharisees complaints, Jesus responds and he cites Isaiah 29, 13. He has a slightly different translation. These people draw near to me and with their mouth and with their lips honor me, but they remove their hearts from me. And their fear of me is nothing but a commandment of men, which is something that they were taught. Jesus then said, don't tell these Pharisees Telling them that all evil things come from within. And it's those things that we need to fire the person. Jesus tells us that sin comes from within, not something we can do to Now, to be clear, Jesus is not discounting the Pharisees, he's not discounting the Pharisees' traditions, and he is not discounting the law. He is not saying you should throw those things away. But his question is their motivation. Are they following their traditions in order to glorify God? Or are they just doing it to make themselves look holy for the other people? Or what is most likely, are they doing it because they have always started that way? The argument that is underneath the hand washing argument is this. Do they even know why they are doing it anymore? Or is it just something that they do? In the Hebrew Bible, the purpose of the law and the commandments from God were set out so they could be a guide for us on how to love them. The laws were put in place to provide a template for how we treat each other. So that everybody can get along, and then, by extension, the world will be glorified through God's good works and good deeds that they provide to our people. Unfortunately, these particular Pharisees use their power and their knowledge of the rules to condemn and defame people. But then, this is the whole thing. The traditions that the Pharisees were dependent on the state of the heart. I mean, you can do all of the right things, all of the so-called right things. You guys can come here every single Sunday. You can talk. You can say the creed. You can make the sign of the cross at all the right places. You can kneel at the altar. If you're up here, you can wear it all. And those are all wonderful things to do. If you're not feeling it in your heart, if the Holy Spirit isn't at work through those actions, at best, those are just incomplete. 
The Pharisees here say they didn't win. Their perspective was, we always won. We always won. We always win. We always But the reality is that they're wrong. It's not true. It's just the only way that they have done in their collective memory. That tradition was born from their time in exile. It did not exist before that moment. Now, traditions are wonderful. They give us the sense of stability. The reason we make that sign of the cross, the reason we sit here and we proclaim this creed there, is so that those actions can be a focusing lens that helps us articulate our faith. And then through those actions, we are brought closer to God. So, tradition is We have a lot of beautiful traditions. Some that might speak to you, and some newer traditions that may not, and that's okay. If they're doing their thing right, they bring you closer to God. Some of us, we love the old thing. And some of us, the more contemporary worship music speaks to us. And there is space for both of them, which is why a two worship services work. And once a month, we get together and we have a single worship service where we share those traditions with each other. A little bit of this service, a little bit of that service. It's beautiful because it reinforces both sets of traditions as valid and it helps us understand that these two things are not in competition with each other. The reality is that we're being honest with ourselves. We should be able to see ourselves in the Pharisees. And that's not just true for any Christian. That is true for anybody who practices any organized faith system. At the end of the day, we're all a little like the Pharisees in one way or Think about this. If Pastor Ali and I came in and declared during the welcome, starting today, we're not going to say the Lord's Prayer or share the peace anymore, ever again, what would you guys do? What if we took out all of these cues and replaced them with feedback there? What if we took out the organ and the piano and said it started using feedback there? How many of you would react like the Pharisees in today's story and declare that this church would never make those Here's the thing, all three of those, those are human traditions that we built up in order to work with God. God did not drop this church here just like it is. All of our traditions, they have value, they have meaning to us, but they only have meaning if they're directing us toward God. Our hearts and our spirits are being guided in fellowship with God, and that is way more important and if the athlete likes to pay the fees to write for it, or even if we sometimes forget to like them at all. And that's why if you ever worship at the altar with me, I will tell you, you cannot mess in your heart. I remember at my second time ever being a worship assistant in a home church in Westchester, our pastor was on vacation, and Pastor Joan Armstrong the many of you guys know because she does three years of weddings, asked me to guide her to our pattern and our tradition of worship at Lord of Life because it was her first time being there. And my second time being there, so I barely knew how to do it myself. And she wanted me to guide her through it. I absolutely don't want to do my ability to do that, and I told her. She gave me some advice in that moment that it has not only stuck with me since, but it's really fit part of my theology. She told me, well, in spite of our best efforts, worship is still hard. And it did. Did we mess some things up? Probably. I'm sure that we did. But our hearts 
were directed towards God, and all of our actions were spirit-led to focus us on the kingdom. So if you stuff got a little bit out of order, but our heart was in the right place, was God any less praise to God? Of course not. So while I do say, I'm sorry, Jesus, I disagree, you really need to walk on the edge of the Holy Spirit. I do find myself in agreement with you in every place. We need to think about how our traditions help us in our mission to be the gospel. How does a particular tradition show the world who we are? Jesus tells us today that sin comes from within our hearts, and sometimes we do end up acting like the Pharisees a little bit. We point out Thoughts, places that they are honoring God differently or more toxically, or they're honoring God wrongly. But what really matters is our spirit, our intentions, and our actions towards other people. We should always be aware of how we feel and act, and we really need to ask ourselves how is this glorifying God and spreading God's word? Because that is the step that makes us a little less like Pegasus. We all make mistakes. We all mess up. And that's human nature. We all sin, and that's okay. Because we have Jesus with us to help us, to guide us, to walk with us, so that we can continue this mission, using our time-honored traditions to show God's good works. Also, making room for two new ones every week. Two weeks from now, September 17th, will be the 24th anniversary of the first breakout service here at the church. In 2000, Pastor Tim was brave enough to ask questions about city youth tradition, and he was bold enough to ask the community to the back. For 24 years on from that moment, and I cannot imagine Trinity not having this service. It's still Trinity, it's still Lutheran, it's still Christian, and it honors God every bit of that early morning service. Trinity Lutheran Church shows the world that we can have our traditions, but still be bold enough to try something. That's why I love this place. I love this community, and I love each and every one of the people that make this possible. So may God bless you. May God keep you in His grace, and may Jesus inspire each and every one of us to honor our traditions, but hold it equally to our heart. So that way we can go and spread the gospel. So that way we can go and do it.